In this video, we're going to convert a non-negative integer decimal number to a binary number that's stored in a C string. So let's go over the algorithm first. The algorithm to convert a decimal number to a binary number looks like this. We're going to take the number and we're going to repeatedly divide it by two. Now, if the remainder is one, the next digit in our binary number is going to be one. If the remainder is zero, the next digit in the binary number is going to be zero. And we're going to take the quotient that results from that division operation, and we're going to use that as the number in the next iteration of this process. And we'll just keep doing this until the number is equal to zero. So for example, if we had the number 43 here, we would take it and divide it by two. We would get 21 with one remainder. We would take 21, divide it by two. We would get 10 and one remainder. We would take 10, divided by two, we would get five and zero remainder. And we continue this process until the number is zero. And this here becomes our binary number. And we're reading it from left to right, going up here. So that's why the number looks like this, 101011. And you can see that if we look at each digit's worth, this is worth one, this is worth two, four, eight, 16, and 32. If we add up the worth of all those digits in the binary number, we end up with 43. So let's actually implement this algorithm now in C. The first thing we'll do is create a character array to store the binary number that we're gonna create. So we'll say car binary 256. Next, we'll have to ask the user for the decimal number that we wanna to convert to binary. So I'll say int decimal. And then we'll make a do while loop to accept the user input. So we'll say printf, and we'll prompt the user for the value. So enter a non-negative integer. We use scanf to store the number they enter into decimal. Now, if they've entered something incorrect, in other words, a number that is not zero or greater, then we'll tell the user that. So we'll say if decimal is less than zero, printf integer must be non-negative. And then we'll have a while condition here that ensures this is the case. So we'll continue to ask the user for the integer so long as decimal is less than zero. So next we can actually use this algorithm here to do the conversion. So to do this, we'll have to keep track of the current digit in the binary number that we're creating. And we'll call that variable length and then we'll use a do while loop here to carry out the algorithm. And we'll continue this algorithm so long as the decimal doesn't equal zero. As soon as decimal equals zero, that's when we know we're done. So first we'll check for the remainder. We'll say if decimal modulus two is equal to zero, then we're gonna set binary at index length equal to the character zero. So this here is the modulus operator. And the modulus operator returns the remainder of a division operation. So here we're saying decimal divided by two, but the actual value here is gonna be the remainder of that division. And we're checking to see if it's equal to zero. If it is, then we're gonna set the next digit in our binary number to zero. Otherwise, we're gonna set the next digit in our binary number to one, because that's the only other possibility. Next, we'll actually divide the number by two. So we'll say decimal divide equal two. So this operator here is gonna take decimal, divide it by two and store the result into decimal because we wanna divide the number by two and use that as our number in the next iteration of the loop. And then finally, we're gonna increment length by one to set the next digit in our binary number that we're building in the next loop iteration. So after we're done this, what we're gonna do is put a null terminator at the end of our binary number representation there, just to finish off the string, because strings in C have to end with a null terminator. So now the next thing we're gonna do is actually reverse the binary number string. Because if you look at this algorithm here, we've been building up our number from left to right, like this, in our binary number character array. But if you look at the actual number itself, it's in this reversed order, where we actually start from the bottom here, and move up to the top when going from left to right here in our binary number representation. 
So as it is right now, this binary string here is actually storing the number backwards. So we're going to reverse it. So to reverse it, we're going to find the middle of this string here, and we're going to swap the characters on either end until we reach the middle. And that will reverse the string. So we'll say car temp for int i is equal to zero, i is less than middle, i plus plus. And so we have our counter variable i going from zero up until the middle of the string. And we'll just swap the characters at either ends of the string by continually incrementing i towards the middle of the string. So here we'll say temp is equal to binary at i, binary at index i is equal to binary at length minus i minus one, and then binary at length minus i minus one is equal to temp. So we're using the classic swap algorithm where we use a temporary variable. In this case, the car temp variable. And we're taking the digit at the start of the string at index i, and we're storing it into temp. So that way we can safely overwrite this digit with the digit at the corresponding index at the end of the binary string. So we overwrite binary at index i with the digit in the corresponding index at the end of the string. And we've safely tucked away the digit that was in the binary string at index i into temp. So now we can use that to set the corresponding digit at the end of the string. So that will reverse the string. And next we can just print it out. So we'll say printf binary number percent s and we'll output the binary number. So if we save and run this, if I enter something like 43, we get 101011, which is exactly what it should be. So this is how we can convert a non-negative integer represented in decimal to a binary number stored in a string using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.